Hi everybody, this is Marlene with Miami Ghost Chronicle Stories of the Supernatural. And today I have a very special story. Uh, this is an intro to some videos I shot a while back um, where I was following the track of a very deadly hurricane that has been mostly forgotten and it occurred back in 1928 uh, and caused the death of thousands of people plus left many other thousands homeless. And um, I grew up in South Florida, so I'm familiar with hurricanes, and I lived through Hurricane Andrew. But now that we are facing Hurricane Irma here in Florida, I thought it was a good time to go ahead and release this video, which uh, is so interesting, but also uh, lets us understand that, especially here in Florida, we've always been under the threat of the devastation of what a hurricane can do so before I get into that video where you're going to see me I'm going to go through most of the points of where these videos from Tamron Avenue where they had one of the mass burials all the way to Canal Point where you're going to see some slides where people were actually uh, they, they just couldn't get these bodies back to any type of burial site and the health department uh, just insisted that they be burnt you're going to see me go to Canal Point, then off. I'm going to give you a shot of what Lake Okeechobee and a really nice day looks like. And then I'm going to end the video when we I go to actually Port Mayaka, where uh, there was the largest of all the mass burials of the bodies that they were able to recover where they were buried. But before I get to that, let me give you a little bit of information about this hurricane, which for all intents and purposes was forgotten and even more so the victims were also forgotten now even before this storm which was unnamed because this was prior to when hurricanes were named it was already packing 150 mile per hour winds and it slammed ashore in West Palm Beach uh, but before that it had already killed 1500 people in the Virgin Islands Puerto Rico and the Bahamas now, within moments of making landfall on a Palm Beach County shoreline, its winds left a trail of destruction all the way from Pompano Beach to Jupiter. Now, the first hit by this very violent weather were the coastal communities, which paid very dearly for this. Uh, four people died in Jupiter. Uh, in Seaside Lake Park, then called Kelsey City, uh, people had to escape their homes falling on their heads many of them caught unawares people had infants ripped from their arms by the winds and killed instantly and what we now consider a category 4 hurricane a monster it raged westward uh, and of course the most crippling blow was saved for the small farming communities that lined Lake Okeechobee especially on its southern shore between Clouston and and Canal Point uh, about 6,000 people lived and worked there and before the end of the day about half of them would die uh, and like you've heard so many times in other types of hurricanes it's not so much the wind it's the water that devastated the people of the glades a five foot mug dike built to hold back Lake Okeechobee waves during summer rains crumbled unleashing a storm surge with the fury of a tidal wave. One family strapped their children to a fallen tree. Some others in the little town of Belle Glade, uh, they rushed up to a water tower, kicking at anyone who got in their way. Uh, in the farming community surrounding South Bay and Pahokee, thousands of field workers hunkered down in flimsy homes, many doomed to drown because of course none of these structures were built to withstand hurricane force winds now in South Bay there was a captain by the name of Ed Forbes and he got a call on the town's only telephone telling him that a deadly storm was headed his way so he and his sons alerted as many of the communities which only was 400 residents as much as they could knocking on all the doors and taking about 200 people to the safest spot that they could find, which was a construction barge. 
that was moored in a canal nearby. Now, nearly all the people who didn't get on the barge lost some part of their family. Uh, there was one woman who floated as far as Belglade, which was about five miles away. She was alive, but the waters beat her up so badly. Uh, it beat off all her clothing, and it left her black and blue all over her body. On another barge, a five-month pregnant woman held her seven-month-old daughter above the knee-deep water as her father and brothers just kept on bailing out the the water because already the bilge system was waterlogged and they were doing this with pots miles away people were hanging on to broken planks in order to keep their heads above water a family had taken shelter in a two-story home in Sebring Farms which is just west of South Bay the house flooded within minutes reaching the group's perch in the rafters and forcing them to cut a hole in the roof with an axe I'm sure many of us can recall scenes like this from when Katrina hit New Orleans and even now most recently when Hurricane Harvey hit Texas. A 14-year-old boy was thrown to the surface of the water just as the house broke into pieces, clinging to a piece of the roof during long hours. Only he and his brother survived. His mother, who couldn't swim, his father, who was sick, and a younger brother all drowned that day those that survive uh, retell about the sting of the wind whipping their faces and the look of terror in the eyes of other humans around them uh, it was just sheer desperation that held them to broken planks or fallen trees as entire buildings tumbled into the flood waters however it was the bodies that haunted the survivors the worst uh, there was too many to count many were decomposed so much that they couldn't be identified and they were rotting so quickly that many of them did not get a decent funeral okay in modern day South Florida uh, so far it was a 61 killed in the 26 billion destruction 26 billion dollar destruction caused by Hurricane Andrew in 1992 the, that serves as the benchmark for how ferocious a weather system can get. But the Great Okeechobee Hurricane of September 26, 1928 demonstrated that whole towns can be washed away in a matter of hours, wiping out generations of families with no one left to identify the dead. They know that a storm that killed half the population of western Palm Beach County and it just left just tattered and broken these small communities now as a matter of fact the impact of this hurricane pitched South Florida into the Great Depression a year before the rest of the country however it was the loss of life that separated the storm from almost any other between 2,500 to 3,000 residents died that day, making it the second deadliest natural disaster in U.S. history behind the Galveston, Texas hurricane of 1900. Today, though, very few are aware of the devastation inflicted by this hurricane in 1928. Many just know it as the forgotten storm. Now, it's forgotten mostly because the politicians at that time downplayed the storm's severity. They were fearful of dampening the tourism that was keeping this region afloat. It was also forgotten because officials failed to adequately document the destruction for future generations. Uh, also, many of those that died were migrant workers who had no families to basically document uh, that a certain person was either dead or was never found after the storm. Many uh, remember the storm of 28 as Black Sunday, the night when death blew down Palm Beach County's back door. Now, one of the most horrendous aspects of the storm was the recovering of the bodies. Okay, 
because this storm caught all the residents of the glades totally unprepared which is why it left such a sheer volume of dead in its wake uh, armies of volunteers built pine boxes to bury the bodies large trucks were commissioned to carry the dead to grave sites on higher drier ground bodies were being hauled out of the water two and three at a time some of them unrecognizable those that helped in the recovery of the dead described the horrid stench that accompanied this horrible task which proved more than anyone could handle and by the fifth day the bodies were rotting in the heat causing a health hazard so the health department instructed the survivors to build a fire and destroy the bodies because they were getting too far along they burned the remains along with those of many others 1600 in all and they were trucked over to Port Mayaka which is on Lake Okeechobee's eastern shore uh, makeshift graveyards on roadside ditches from Pahokee to Sebring contain the remains of scores of others and by that that means that along Lake Okeechobee shores there's dozens of unofficial burial sites where they just open holes and bury the dead um, 69 white people were buried in pine boxes at Woodland Cemetery in West Palm Beach and another 674 black people were buried in a 20 foot hole in the city's pauper cemetery and you're going to see at the beginning of the video that's exactly where I start at is that um, at Tamarind Avenue Cemetery now the number of known graves approached about 2500 however more bodies were never found swallowed whole by the Everglades muck or left to the elements after the government called off the search for lack of money however it was this hurricane that scared the US Army Corps of Engineers into its first major flood control effort in South Florida one that pushed the Hoover administration to build a towering 40-foot high dike because that earthen barrier that was there before that obviously could not withstand the water from this hurricane. Now every year there are at least half a dozen reported paranormal sightings around the lake. People report seeing shadowy bodies floating just above the water. Um, you have to understand that even before this hurricane many of these new arrivals of farmers and migrant workers who came to this area around Lake Okeechobee they were faced with debilitating heat humidity insects pests droughts seasonal flooding and a series of tropical storms the worst being of course the Okeechobee hurricane of 1928 now after this hurricane many of these small communities just ceased to exist after a wall of water nearly 10 feet high basically flooded their homes and the fields and wiped out everything in addition about 35,000 people were left homeless okay and the truth is that like I said many of these people were buried in the cemetery and consecrated grounds but others weren't uh, as the flood waters receded as a matter of fact they were lined in a row on the roads uh, and they say that because of all these bodies that never perceived proper burial plus the fact of the desperation of many of these people who were caught unaware trying to escape and not finding a way to that causes so many of the hauntings that are reported around the shores of Lake Okeechobee especially they say on the night of September 17th which is coming up which is the anniversary date of the hurricane uh, there's sightings of spirits in the cemetery and also along the shores of Lake Okeechobee so uh, take uh, now I'm gonna take you through a tour of all these locations fortunately I was there when it was a beautiful beautiful day which is in complete contrast to what occurred on that September Sunday evening almost a hundred years ago 
Hi, everybody. This is Marlene. I want to let you know that this podcast version of the show has been edited because there were some portions of it that just don't make sense for those of you who are just listening. However, if you would like to see and hear the entire show, you can go to YouTube and look us up under Miami Ghost Chronicles. And thank you so very much for listening and being part of our audience.